are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord, unto the Lord. Shall the gathering of his people be? We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto thee, unto the Lord. We are gathering together unto Jesus. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're welcome to our faith clinic program. By the grace of God, we want to thank God for his mercies for keeping us alive. Can we say a word of prayer before we proceed in the service? Our Father and our God, our gathering is unto thee, not to any man, not to any other being, but to you and you alone. We have come to pray, we have come to learn, we have come to seek your face. Father, reveal yourself to us, answer all our prayers, do us good, almighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm only a vessel, my God. Use me to the glory and praise of your name. As we pray and we go into your word, Father, move in the lives of all my listeners. Bless them. Make them whole. Deliver the captive. Heal the sick. Lose those that are bound. Encourage the depressed. Comfort the sorrowful. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. We're going to do some prayers before we go into our message for today. We're going to do some intercessory prayers, and God, I believe God will answer our prayers. In the book of Revelations, chapter 14, verse 15. Revelations 14, verse 15. The Bible says, And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. The harvest of the earth is ripe. We're going to be praying for harvest of souls. We're going to say, Father, Breathe upon all our outreaches, all our tracts, and make them instrument of harvest of souls into your kingdom. Father, breathe upon all our outreaches, all our evangelical outreaches, Father, in in persons or in groups, on all the social media, through the radio, online radio program, and all our tracts. And make them instruments of harvest of souls into your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, King of glory, we ask you, Lord, that you anoint specially all our outreaches, all our efforts to win soul into your kingdom, to deliver the captive, to turn men from sin unto righteousness. Father, anoint all our efforts, all our tracts, our posters, Lord God. Breathe upon them such that anyone that sees or touches or reads them, mighty God, will be won to you by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask, Lord, because your word says, the harvest of the earth is ripe. Oh God, make this instrument like your sickle of harvest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The word, the word of the Lord says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2. He says, Ye are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. You are our epistles, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. What it means is this. Some people will never read the Bible 
before they get born again. It is our lives. The lives of we believers that they will read, they will see, and they will be convicted. So we're going to pray. We're going to say, Father, baptize us, your children, with the spirit of the fear of the Lord and holiness so that our lives can draw others into your kingdom and your church in the name of Jesus. Father, baptize us, your children, your saints, with the spirit of the fear of the Lord and holiness so that our lives can draw unbelievers into your kingdom and your church in the name of Jesus. Maliko prako si preke sepori kata lizo preke tobo. Father, put your fear in our hearts. May our hearts not turn others away from you. In the name of Jesus, may we not be a stumbling block that will hinder others from knowing you. In the name of Jesus, may our lives not push others away from you. King of glory, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Maliko praka subroko sepori kata. Father, baptize us with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. May we not be swept away with the spirit of the end times. We are men's love for you will wax cold. We are many will fall away. May we not be among those that will fall away unto perdition in the name of Jesus. Even as we have laid our hands on the plow. May we never look back in Jesus name. We know that your, your, you have a seal. Mighty God, your foundation stands sure having this seal that those who name the name of the Lord must depart from iniquity. The grace to depart from iniquity. We ask, oh Lord, you baptize us with that grace in the name of Jesus that our lives may reach out to others. Our lives may convict sinners. Our lives may reflect Jesus in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus mighty name we have prayed in the book of john chapter 10 verse 29 john 10 29 the bible says my father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hands i want to pray for you my listener in the name of jesus christ the devil or the storms of life will not snatch you out of the hands of Jesus. So we're going to pray. We will, we will say, Father, Father, establish all our old and new converts forever in you. Establish us, O God, forever in you. Help us to abide in you for the rest of our lives. In the name of Jesus, help us to dwell in your house forever, O God. As David said, he wants to dwell in your house forever and ever. Mighty God, the grace to abide in you. The grace to be rooted in you. In the name of Jesus, we ask for that grace. Maliko prakasuzo perikata. Jesus, our high priest, the one who makes intercession for us with the Father. We ask you to intercede for us that nothing, not the storms of life, not death, not sickness or disease, not poverty or riches, not influence, not promotion, nothing in the world, no demon, no angel, no principality or power may be able to separate us from you, O God, in the name of Jesus. Malipra kosuperikata Establish us, O God. Establish even the young converts in the name of Jesus. Give them the grace to be rooted in you, Lord, to be grounded in you, Lord. Every satanic voice speaking to them, wanting to discourage them, we silence you in the name of Jesus. We command you to shut up in the name of Jesus. For the word of the Lord says, the voice of a stranger, they will not listen to. Only the voice of their good shepherd will they listen to in the name of Jesus. All those who are discouraged, all those who are offended, in your mercy, Father, draw them back to you in the name of Jesus. All those who are backslidden, mighty God, in your mercy, as you did for the prodigal son who came to his senses, who came to himself and said, He will, he will go back to his father's house, he will confess that he has sinned before God and before his father. Let this one, oh God, 
come back to their senses in the name of Jesus. We pull them back. Makalepo ikata. By the power of your spirit, we snatch them back from the hand of the wicked one. In the name of Jesus, we refuse, we refuse to lose them to the kingdom of darkness. In the name of Jesus, Maseke Porikata. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lastly, before we go into the world, Luke 19, verse 17. Luke chapter 19. Verse 17, the Bible says, And he said to them, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. Luke 19, verse 17. He said to them, Well done, good servant, because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. We're going to pray. We're going to say, Father, give we your children the grace to be faithful in the kingdom assignments given to us so that we may never lose our harvest in life. Give we your children the grace to be faithful in the kingdom assignments given to us so that we may never lose our reward, our harvest in life. Can we begin to pray in the name of Jesus, mighty God, the grace to be faithful in what you have called me to do. The grace to be faithful in winning of souls, in following of souls, in encouraging the discouraged, in counseling, oh God, in making sure they are established in intercession, mighty God, in the work of the kingdom. Give me that grace. Give me that grace to be faithful in the kingdom assignments you have betted me to do in the name of Jesus. Help me, oh God. I refuse to be an unfaithful servant. Oh God, I refuse to lose that which you have given unto me in the name of Jesus. Malika Perika Saporikata Ikomopopo. Nobody will take my crown. I refuse to lose my crown. Masete Porikata Yekete Porikata. I refuse to lose my place in the kingdom of God. Masete Porikata. My candle will not be replaced. My candle will not be uprooted. My life will not be put out in the name of Jesus. Maleke Porikata. The grace to be faithful. Masetebo. Till the end. Till the end. Till the end. I ask, oh God, give me that grace. Give us that grace in your church, in Victory House. Give us that grace, oh God. Thank you, our Father, so that we will not lose our harvest. Mighty God, so that we will please you. Oh God, thank you, our Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' majestic name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for answering our prayers. We give you glory and we give you praise. We worship you because you are faithful. As we go into your word, Father, speak to us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I welcome you once more to the redeemed Christian Church of God, Victory House, Lagos Province 3 Headquarters, uh, pastored by Pastor Tony Olubemi. Today, we're going to be looking at the secrets of Samuel, part 4. The secrets of Samuel, part 4. I'll be taking my text again from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1. 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no widespread revelation. Another translation says, and there was no open vision. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious or scarce or rare. As some translation puts it, in those days. There was no open vision or widespread revelation. In our first part, we looked at the child Samuel or the boy Samuel. And we said, to excel in the kingdom, you must be like a child. Samuel was a child before God. He was humble, he was broken, he was teachable. You could could pick up or, or go online and watch or listen to the first part. Of this series. In the second part, we said he ministered before the Lord or he ministered to the Lord. 
That means his service was to the Lord. He was a worshiper. He knew how to wait. He was a waiter. He was a waiter. A waiter is a servant. Whatever you tell him to do, he does. He makes sure you are fully satisfied. As believers, we must learn to wait on the Lord. To make sure we please God in everything we do. As the psalmist said about the, the meditation of his heart and the words of his mouth. Pleasing unto God. In the third part, we said before Eli. We looked at before Eli and we said, You are called to serve under somebody and to serve people. Your service to God, whom you can't see, is to human beings. You know, you will be called to pour water on the hand of somebody. We saw Elisha pouring water on the hand of Elijah. It wasn't just serving Elijah, it was serving God. You know, we see Peter, uh, I say Peter, we see Timothy serving Paul. We see them assisting Paul to, to, to be fruitful in the work of the ministry. We see many of these saints serving God under those whom God has placed them. And they were faithful to the end. And we also said in that same part three that your gifts and callings is to serve other people, to be a blessing to other people. You are blessed to be a blessing. You are saved to save other people. In this um, fourth part, we'll be looking at the scarcity of God's word. The scarcity of God's word. The Bible says there in that first Samuel chapter three verse one, it says, "And the word of the Lord was precious." Another translation says, "Was rare." Another one says was scarce in those days. We see in the life of Eli, in the era of Eli, that the scarcity of God's word was rife. The scarcity of God's word was the order of the day. God's word was scarce to him. His era was about one of the bleakest, one of the darkest in the annals of Israel. Where there was no word, no fresh word. Coming from the Lord to the people. There was no fresh word coming from the Lord to him. We also see that Eli had absolutely no regard for the written or the living word of God. What was written and what God was saying to him, he had no regard for it. The, the, the laws that Moses, by the Spirit of God, had written down, Eli did not pay attention to it. And even when God sent a man of God to him, a messenger of truth. The one who had the word of God. Who came to him to tell him what God was saying for now. The living word of God. The Rema word of God. He didn't pay attention to it. You know, he, he, he was like, let God do what he wants to do. We see also when Samuel told him, the little boy Samuel, who paid so much attention to God's word. When he told him, confirming what the man of God had earlier said. Eli had a lackadaisical attitude. He had a nonchalant attitude. I don't care attitude towards the word of God. And he paid dearly for it. Beloved, God doesn't waste resources. God is very prudent with his resources. God does not waste his words. God only sends his word to those who appreciate his words. You see, when you are not faithful in little things much will not be given to you when the little revelation the little rema the little word the little instruction the little teaching or insight god gives to you if you don't obey it it will be useless for him to give you more revelation to give you more insight if the teachers he had sent to you is anointed balanced teachers he has sent to you you rebel against their teachings how do you think he will send you more anointed teachers or more in-depth teachers teachers with more in-depth knowledge of course not he will not praise the lord from what we see in this first Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 we understand that there can be a famine of God's word. There can be a famine of God's word. And when I say famine, a scarcity. The word famine is F-A-M-I-N-E. F-A-M-I-N-E. It means scarcity. When they say there's a famine in the land, that means there's, there's scarcity of rain. There are no crops growing. 
We see that in Amos chapter 8 verse 11. Amos 8 and 11. The Bible says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You see that? There will be a famine, and we are are in that famine today. We are in that famine today, where you hardly hear the balanced word of God. You hardly hear the word of God that will stir your heart, that will challenge you, that will spoil you on, that will rebuke you of sin. Praise the Lord. We, there's a famine of God's word today. Beloved, the Bible must also understand that there can be a time when the teachers with balanced word of God are scarce from a person or from a people or a generation. We see that in Isaiah 30 verse 20. Isaiah 30 verse 20. The Bible says, Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more. With your own eyes, you will see them. What is God saying here? God is letting us understand that even if you are passing through storms of life, even if you are passing through challenges, even if things are, are, are difficult, you are experiencing difficulties. You are facing mountains. He says, look here. If you have the word of God with you, if you have God's anointed vessels speaking living word into your life, beloved, you are blessed. You are blessed because God does nothing without his word. God does nothing without his word. Everything we see today is by the word of God. The whole earth is sustained by the word of his power. Praise the Lord. All of us came to be by the word of God. So it's very, very important. You see, one way you will know a man or a woman destined for the pit is if he has no one to tell him the truth anymore. When a man has nobody to tell him the truth, When a man has nobody who can look into his eyes and tell him the balanced word of God, beloved, that man or woman, no matter his position in life, is destined for the pit. Where all those you have around you are those who tell you what you want to hear, beloved, you are in deep problem. Don't surround yourself with yes men and yes women. Never do that. Never do that. Usually, when the Lord speaks and a person becomes rebellious to his word, he stops speaking. The next thing to look out for is judgment. And such a person, there will be scarcity of God's word in his life. God won't speak anymore. We saw that in the life of Saul, the king. When he kept disobeying God, if you take note, the Lord stopped speaking to King Saul. Even when he calls on the priests to intercede for him, to bring out the human and the thumim, to commune with God, God was silent. There was scarcity of God's word in the life of King Saul. There was a drought, there was a famine of God's word in the life of King Saul. And that was because he formed the habit of consistently rebelling against the word of God. So God stopped speaking. And in desperation, when the enemy drew close, what did he do? He went to consult demons. And of course, he and his household were doomed for it. I want to plead with you. Pay close attention to the word of God. Respect the word of God as God himself. Fear the word of God. Give heed to the word of God. Reverence the word of God. So we saw that in 1 Samuel 2, 27 to 36. 1 Samuel 2, 27 to 36. God stopped speaking to Eli because Eli formed the habit of rebelling against God's word. So there was a scarcity. You see, God is not a talkative. God doesn't talk too much. 
I want to pray for you. That may the word of God never be scarce in your life. Oh, I want you to pray for yourself. Say, Father, may your word never be scarce in my life. Jehovah, may your word never be scarce in my life. In the name of Jesus, may there never be a time in my life, in the life of my wife or descendants, where your word will be scarce. In the name of Jesus, may there never be a time in your church, oh God, in the body of Christ, where your word will be scarce. In the name of Jesus, in this generation, mighty God, we are interceding, oh God, may your word never be scarce. In the name of Jesus, you will pray another prayer for yourself. You will say, Father, in your mercies, don't be silent concerning matters of my destiny. In your mercies, oh God, don't be silent concerning the matters of my destiny. Lord, you were silent concerning the matter of the destiny of King Saul. You were silent concerning the matter of the destiny of Eli because he rebelled against you. Mighty God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, in your mercies, oh God, don't be silent. Don't keep quiet concerning matters of my destiny. In the name of Jesus, send me a word in due season. Malika parika si porikata. Jibra konsoto porikata. Show me mercy, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One of the reasons why Apostle Peter made it to the end was because he had people who could tell him the truth when he was missing it in life. When he was going wayward. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 to 14. Galatians 2, 11 to 14. The Bible records there that Peter was backsliding. And what was he doing? Peter became a hypocrite. Peter became a two-faced apostle. Peter became an apostle of deceit. Peter became a liar. He was lying. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of that young apostle, Paul by name. Peter, when he was with the Gentiles alone, he will eat with them. He will flow with them. He will show them love. The moment the Jews come, Peter will ostracize them. He will shift away from them. He will snub them. Why? Because the Jews were not too comfortable with Gentile believers. So when Peter saw the Jews, he will, he will keep afar, at bay, the Gentiles. When Apostle Paul, that young apostle, noticed this, he walked up to him and Barnabas. Because by now, Peter being a leader in the church, had began to lead other ones astray. Paul walked up to him. And called him to order. Paul told him, you are a hypocrite. You are lying. You are deceiving these Gentile believers. These young believers. You are leading them astray. You are two-faced. And unfortunately, even Barnabas. Who ought to know better. These are people I met in the faith. And other believers are following your example. And Peter repented. Peter changed. I pray for you one more time. May the Lord surround your destiny. With people who will tell you the truth. Even when you don't want to hear it. And by the grace of God. You will always want to hear the truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we see God was no more speaking to Eli. God abandoned Eli. Oh my goodness. His word became scarce. His word became scarce to Eli. And we know from the scriptures. Psalm 119 verse 105. Psalm 119. Psalm 105. The word of God. The ministry of the word of God. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. And a light unto our path. The word of God is a lamp. It's a lamp. If the place is dark, a cobra, a scorpion, something dangerous may be lurking in the dark. But when you have a lamp, when you have a lamp, you can see the danger. Some years ago, I was and in a project somewhere in southwest Nigeria. You know, one town like that. And Igboho is the name of the town. Igboho. Either Igboho or Igbeti. I think it was Igbeti. Igbeti. Igbeti is just before Igboho. And we walked late into the night. I and my team. And while we were working on this project, we had 
a torch light with us. While we were walking, I saw a big black scorpion walking towards the foot of my colleague. And my colleague had no shoe on. I think he had only slippers or was barefooted. We were all engrossed with the walk. It was dark, but we had a lamp. We had a torchlight. Apparently, I was holding the torchlight and I saw the scorpion with the tail, the poisonous tail, you know, where it sting, you know, the stinger. It was walking towards the foot of my colleague. Oh God, thank God. I quickly saw it because the light shone. So I called the att- I raised alarm and my colleague jumped up. We saw the very massive scorpion, black, black scorpion, and we killed the thing. Now imagine if we had no touch light, no light, that scorpion would have stung my colleague and in the middle of that place, late at night, he might have died. So the, the word of God is a lamp. The word of God keeps you safe. The word of God shows it, it illuminates your life. We also see that the word of God is a light onto our path. When, when a light shines on your path, you bet you are not meant to miss your path. You are driving in the night, your headlamp goes off, and there are big portals. You bet if you are not careful, you are going to enter that portal. Let's see in closing what some things the word of God does. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 11. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 11. Hear what the word does. The law of the Lord, of course, his law is his word. The the law of the word of, of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. God's word can convert a hardened soul. The testimony, which is also his word of the Lord, is sure, making wise the simple. Are you foolish? Are you fond of walking in error? In the name of Jesus, as you pay attention to God's word, the spirit of wisdom will be imparted unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. It says on that the statutes of the Lord, they are right, rejoicing the heart. When you study God's word, when you eat God's word, my beloved, they become sweet to your soul. They become the rejoicing of your heart. When you find God's word and you eat it, Beloved, you have a spring in your step. You are not bothered about what the economy is saying. Because you have an inside information that concerning you and your household, all shall be well. He now went on to say, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The word of God makes your eyes to shine. You see beyond your nose. It enlightens you. You are illuminated. You see beyond your nose. Some days ago, I was, I, I, I was, should I say sharing the scriptures or, or, or debating the scriptures with some of my acquaintances or friends. And they were talking about masturbation. And they were, they were like, there's no way in the word of God where God speaks against masturbation or smoking of Indian, Indian hemp. In actual fact, they were claiming that medical science says masturbation is good, it's okay. And they were giving medical reports. <laughs> they said, oh, Indian hair, for some people, when they smoke it, their brain works better. The devil is a liar. When you have an encounter with the word of God, your spiritual eyes are enlightened. I used to be bound to masturbation. And I can tell you it's a demonic bondage. It's, it's, it's a filthy spirit that holds you bound. You become a slave. You become ashamed. You lose your self-esteem. You are, you are ridden with guilt. You are disorientated. You can't think straight. You are full of lust. That devil is a liar. The word of God enlightens the eyes. You know that smoking... You can't smoke anymore. It may not be written in black and white in the Bible. You know that your body is a temple of God. Whatever we defile that holy temple of God, you will, do, you will do away with it. The word of God enlightens the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord, which is his word also, the judgments of the Lord are true and
and righteous altogether. The word of God helps you to tell the truth. The word of God helps you to be righteous. It says, more to be desired are they than gold. Yes, than much fine gold. The word of God has more value than gold. Has more value than anything in the world. It says it is sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them, your servant is warned. And in keeping them, there is great reward. The word of God warns you. The word of God corrects you. The word of God protects you. When you are going astray, the word of God calls you back to order. I've had the word of God calling me back to order countless times. I've had the word of God rebuking me countless times. I tell you this. There are times when maybe I have a misunderstanding with my wife and I want to say something. The word of God will tell me, don't say it. Keep quiet. Shut up. And if I say, my goodness, the word of God will rebuke me. I told you not to say. I, you know, I feel the Holy Spirit grieved in my heart. I have to start repenting. The word of God, when you keep it, there is great reward. You will be rewarded. I pray for you, you will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. You see, Eli was eating chaff. He didn't have the word of God. The word of God was scarce. He was not eating the real food. And of course, because he was eating chaff, he was starving the whole nation of Israel. As a father, as a mother, is God's word scarce in your life. It's, you don't need the word of God just for yourself. You also need it for your descendants born and unborn. Samuel was conversant with the living word of God. Samuel did not play with the word of God. We are in the days where the relevant word of God that can change the heart and convert the soul is very scarce. But by the mercies of God, we still have faithful messengers, faithful servants of God, faithful teachers of God's word who are still speaking God's word in times like this. First Samuel 3.21 Hear what the Bible says. First Samuel 3.21 And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh. By what? By the word of the Lord. Samuel did not know scarcity of the word of God. Beloved, are you listening to me? You've never given your life to Christ. Jesus is that living word of God. Is Jesus scarce in your life? Can you see that Jesus is very scarce in your life? Jesus has no place in your heart. He's not number one in your life. You don't have to end like Eli. You don't have to end like Saul. You can end well, you know. All you need to do is to give your life to Jesus. All you need to do is to pay attention, give heed, surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You can do that right now by bowing your heart, meaning it from the depth of your heart and saying this after me. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I surrender my life to you. I confess I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died for my sins by hanging on the cross. I confess with my mouth that he's my Lord and Savior. I know and I believe he rose again from the dead on the third day. I rebuke Satan from my life. I do away with Satan. I give my life to you, Father, spirit, soul, and body. I ask that Jesus comes to reign in my life. Comes to reign in my heart. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I want to live for you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for you before we pray. Father, I pray for my brother and my sister who have repented today, who have surrendered their life to Jesus. Mighty God, save them even to the uttermost in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever you set free is free indeed. Nobody can battle with the Lord and win. Father, snatch these ones from the hands, from the clutches of Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. Set them free totally free from
from sin and Satan in Jesus' name. Every demonic yoke in their lives, every satanic habit in their life, by your power, I decree they be broken in the name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of sprinkling, the blood of Jesus. That blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. May that blood avail for them in the name of Jesus Christ. Use them for your glory, Lord. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' majestic name, we have prayed. The rest of us, can we pray together? All of us pray together. You will say, Father, feed me with your undiluted word all the days of my life. Feed me, Lord, with your own diluted word in the name of Jesus. I don't want your diluted word. I don't want adulterated word. Fill me with your own diluted word. Malike peke sepori kataba. Feed me with your own diluted word that I may grow thereby, that I may be useful for you, that I may be a stalwart in the faith, that, oh God, my tree may be such that other birds may nest in my tree and other animals, other people may, 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 may find shelter under me in the name of Jesus, mighty God. Feed me with your own diluted word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. You will say, Father, in your mercy, don't let your word be scarce in my life. Oh, Lord, in your mercy, Lord, don't let your word be scarce in my life. In the name of Jesus, Malika parika saporikata, ila zuzaporikata, any power that wants God's word to be scarce in my life, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Any power that wants God's word to be scarce in my home, in the life of my children, in your church, oh God, in Victory House, in the body of Christ, we rebuke in the name of Jesus. Maleke porikata, may your word not be scarce in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There's a word for every season. There's a timely word for every season. There's a word for now. There's a word for now. When David was to face the Philistines in his, second, in his first battle as a king, the Lord guided David how to face them. In the second battle as a king, when the Philistines faced him again, the word for now came again. God changed the strategy. It was not the first way he fought them that he fought them the second time. God gave him another word for now. God gave him a rhema word. In the name of Jesus, God's word for now, God's word for every season of your life will not be scarce in the name of Jesus. You will say, Father, give me a word in every season of my life. In every season of my life, give me a word, oh God. A word for now. A rhema word. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to be stranded. Maleke porikata. In the crossroad of life, mighty God, in the valley of decision, give me a word for now. Give my children a word for now. Give my spouse, oh God, my generation, your church, a word for now. Thank you, Father, in every season of our lives. Father, give us a word. Give us a word. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You will say, Father, guide me by your word. Guide me by your word. Order my footsteps. Guide me, O oh God. Maleke porikata. Guide me, O oh God. Guide me, O oh God. Guide me, O oh God. Misate porikata porikata. Jikeleke porikata bo. Lasu broko se prekete. Neke porikata baba. Guide me by your word. In the name of Jesus. Guide me by your word. Guide me by your word. Guide me by your word. In Jesus name We have prayed We will pray that prayer again Some years ago Before I got married There was this young lady I really liked Beautiful Christian lady You know we, we both liked each other And and Everything Humanly speaking pointed to the fact that She would make a good wife I mean she was Spiritual in my eyes, she was physically beautiful. She was, I mean, you know. And this day, we went to church together. i never forget at Muson Center. She sat beside me and I would steal a glance at her and admire her. And I said to myself, wow, she will make a good wife. And all of a sudden, 
all of a sudden, my Bible was opened on my lap. But you bet I was not reading the Bible. My attention was not on the Bible. My attention was on the beautiful sister beside me. All of a sudden, the word of the Lord leaped like neon light and caught my eyes. It just leaped up and I looked. It caught my eyes and I looked at the, you know, the word. The Bible, God spoke to me through his word in Proverbs 19 verse 14. Proverbs 19 verse 14. And what did the, the word of God say? It says, fathers can give their sons houses and riches, but a prudent wife comes from the Lord. Fathers can give their sons houses and riches, but a prudent wife comes from the Lord. I said, oh, oh, you mean she's not prudent? And for me, that settled it. God guided me away from that trap. God, by his word, you will pray for yourself. Father, guide me by your word. In the name of Jesus, you guided Samuel by your word. Mark Calebo, John the Baptist was guided by your word. Peter and Paul, James and John, those who made it in the faith. David was guided by your word. Abraham by your word. Isaac by your word. Makaleke Porikata, he was to go to Egypt, but by your word, you spoke to him. Don't go to Egypt. Remain. Remain in Jera. He remained. He sold in the land by your word. And he became so great. Jacob also was guided by your word. King of glory. Guide us by your word. Guide us by your word. Give us light and illumination by your word. In the name of Jesus, give us light and illumination by your word. Give us light, oh God. Give our lives light and illumination by your word. Don't let our lives be slippery. In the name of Jesus, may my path, may our path not be dark and slippery. In the name of Jesus, show us the way to take a life. Show us the way to take a life. Show, show our children the way to take a life. Show our pastors, our ministers, the workers, the elders, the men and women, the youth, the teenagers, our children, the way to take a life. Show us as a nation, our political leaders, show them the way to take a life. In the name of Jesus, our spiritual leaders, show them the way to take a life. The heads of homes, fathers and mothers, show them the way to take a life. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Lastly, we're going to be praying for the church. You will say, Father, deliver your church from, a, from adulterated and poisoned world that makes weaklings out of believers. Father, deliver your church from adulterated and poisoned world that makes weaklings out of believers in the name of jesus mighty god deliver to your church in this generation deliver the body of christ from adulterated world from poisoned world that makes weaklings out of believers weaklings to sin makaparikata that makes them easily succumb to the wind and caprices of the devil. Masekepo, that makes them follow after the world. That makes them seek after what the world is seeking after. That makes them fashion their life, our lives after the world. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, deliver your church from adulterated and poisoned world that weakens us. In the name of Jesus, Masekepoketebos. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We worship your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Can we just appreciate God for answered prayers? Can we magnify him? Can we give him all the glory and all the praise? You deserve it, O oh Lord. You deserve it, O oh Lord. You deserve our adoration. Thank you because your word will not be scarce in our lives. Thank you for your timely word. Thank you for your written word. Thank you for your living word. Thank you for not keeping our teachers far from us. Thank you for your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Thank you for your word that converts our souls. Thank you for your word that gives us joy. Thank you for your word that warns us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we bless your holy name. We worship you. We thank you. It's our prayer tonight 
that your word will not be scarce in our lives. In the name of Jesus, unlike Eli, your word will not be scarce in our lives. You revealed yourself to Samuel by your word. Reveal yourself to us by your word in the name of Jesus. Oh, your word declares that that a time will come and this is a time that nobody will tell another know the Lord for everyone will know the Lord themselves. Help us to individually have a deep relationship, a living relationship. Oh God with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint our ears. Oh God to hear your word clearly when you speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Anoint our eyes to see revelations from your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us a hunger. Give us a thirst for your word even till our old age in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, may we not disdain your word. May we not keep away from your word. Give us the grace to embrace, to love and embrace the truth all the time. Father, we worship you. We give you glory and we give you praise. Bless all your children. Keep them. Father, empower them to do your will. Use them for your glory, Lord, in these last days. May they have, you, you have made them a salt in the earth. May their saltiness not be lost in sorrow, not lose in sorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, may our lives challenge unbelievers. May our lives prick the hearts of unbelievers. May our lives be a living epistle that they will read and come to the glorious knowledge of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father. We worship and we magnify you. In Jesus' majestic name, we pray. God bless you. See you next week for the concluding part of this series, The Secrets of Samuel. Shalom.